happened. And I took it very seriously. <laughs> Put your hands down. And luckily I could referee and still watch gestures. So he insisted on making gestures to Felicia while oh, she's already killing people. So I would turn to him and have, I'd whip out a red card, which means nothing anyway to spectators, but I'd go, we had to do red cards first to a spectator. I'd go, red card, and make sure the scorekeepers, they used to be scorekeepers in fencing. I go, red card, write it down, Bucky Lee, red card. And the person would write it down, I'd have those sisters, the Thompson twins, and then that's later probably. Okay, so I had people writing down the stuff. And then, sure enough, he'd get desperate. Maybe someone hit Felicia one more time. And he'd go, no, or do something. And I turned a black card, and he saw me reach into my jacket. He'd throw the folding chair that he was on. He's leaning on these chairs. He'd run fast across the room. <laughs> and I remember the first time I thought, I can't black card somebody who isn't here. He ran away. He's gone. <laughs> So I put the black card back. I thought, oh, that's ridiculous. I can't black card him. If I get the joy of doing this to someone, and everyone goes, <laughs> so I put it away. And then, like, every couple of months, this would happen. I'd go, but before I could get it out, he'd run. So it really wasn't a black card because he didn't see it. And we would do this for a while. And then I started impersonating Bucky running to the Clintons and other people who were in the team at that time. Um, you know what I mean. Anyway, to introduce Ira Zimmerman to the Hall of Fame, we have Bucky Leach. Are you doing the introduction? No. You're not. I lied. Of course, it's Felicia Zimmerman. <laughs> now, you know, I had the distinct privilege of being the referee who refereed both sisters' first national title. One, I think, was Colorado, and I think it was Fort Myers. Colorado Springs? Um, best for last, right? So um, thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you, Andy and the committee. You know, I think everyone's clear about Iris's results. Um, she was the first world champion for the US uh, at the age of 14, that world champion. And it was in Paris. And it, you know, it was an amazing time. I was hiding behind these bushes, like, because I just was so nervous. So I'm like, there's these bushes, I'm, like peeking through. Did you get the touch? The touch? Did she get the touch? And she just took it so relaxed. And it was about her attitude on strip and her attitude while she was fencing. She, it was always really fun, like she always made it a joke. She's fencing Trelini, she's killing her, 5-0, and all of a sudden her tip's not working and she's like looking at her tip, she's like coming here and she's testing. She's like, oh, tip's not working, ha ha ha. And I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> so nerve-wracking. And she's like, oh, fix the tip, and she'd throw her weapon and grab another one. You know, and she had this great attitude. It was just very carefree when she was on the strip. And she was intense, but she was very carefree. And I remember we were in Canada at a competition when it was really, truly a North American Cup. And the Canadians decided to change the rules of how we're gonna qualify for the final. So instead of DEs, they would just, we were down to 16 fencers, and they made two pools of eight. And the pool was Iris Zimmerman, myself, and Susie, uh, and another person, and then the other um, pool was a couple Canadian people, and Melanie Jones, and a few other people. So all of us are really nervous. It's the Olympic year, and so we're all trying to figure out, okay, what does this mean? Who's going to make the top eight? You know, how, I mean, how many bouts do I have to... Anne's calculating how many bouts she has to win by how many indicators, and Iris strolls over, and she's like, I don't know about you guys, but I'm making it out of this round. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, great, great, fantastic. I'm really nervous, anyway. You know, and she was a great teammate. You know, she always made it fun, and you know, she's always the youngest on the team, but she was always there, just always by the side of the strip, water, 
bucket for Anne. <laughs> but she was always ready. But you know, I want to talk a little bit like Peter did about, you know, what is it like to be the sister, to be a teammate. I'll give you a little glimpse of Iris outside of fencing. You know, we'd start. <laughs> It started off as, um, you know, two sisters. We would pummel each other at, at, at any moment, except for at the fencing club. We were just sort of well, as best well behaved as possible. But in the car, car trips, imaginary line, you're over the line. You're over my line, you're over my line. And then we, you know, get going. But, you know, Iris had a very soft side, which was she carried a, a stuffed, yellow monkey with her everywhere. Every tournament, she had her little monkey with the little tropical shirt, um, and this was uh, Empire State Games that she brought it with her. She always had her little monkey, I think you were what, 11, 12 years old? And she lost it at Empire State Games. Left the dormitories, she lost her monkey, and it was devastating. I can't fence, I don't have my monkey. <laughs> But she carried that with her. She always had the little trinkets with her that always made her feel comfortable, feel good, feel at home. And 10 years later, my mom found a similar monkey and gave it to her. And I think she has it sealed in a glass jar. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, when she was at the World Championships that year in Paris, where she won, the bout before, she's, you know, waiting to fence the gold medal match. And I'm thinking, Okay, I gotta really be positive for her. I have to really think of something good to say. I'm, I'm so nervous. She's fencing for the gold medal. And she says, "You know, Felicia, um, there's this really cute boy that I've met. I saw him, and and she's right. It's just minutes before she has to fence the gold medal match, and she's asking me about boys, <laughs> about boys, about meeting boys." about how am I gonna to talk to him? You know, what should I say to him? He's French. <laughs> and I thought, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm exactly focused. But when she put that mask on, it was just all business. And then just this lightness about her. <laughs> you know, but now, you know, she brings that same intensity and humor and, and love and passion and compassion to Fencing Club and to her family and to her extended family here today at Rochester Fencing Club. And even to the women's foil team. I remember, you know, when she was uh, on the road trying to make the 2008 Olympic team. Fortunately, she didn't make it, but you know, that, that time was very important for her even though she wasn't fencing her best for herself to make the team, she wanted to make sure that the team qualified, made the slot. It was, was important for her that the team had the slot for the 2008 Olympics, and that she, was, she wanted to be there for the team at every one of those team World Cups. She wanted to help the team as much as possible. Um, what you may or may not know is she has her MBA. She's a mother of an almost one-year-old precocious blonde-headed, blue-eyed baby with German genes. <laughs> She's president of the Stanford Alumni. She works at the Monroe County Sports Commission in Rochester, New York. She's, she volunteers her time there. And you know what's about, what's interesting is she does so much for the fencing club. She, she's on the Facebook, she does all the social media, and her favorite classes are the beginner classes. She loves teaching any of the intro classes. Not, no offense, guys. <laughs> but she loves to teach the intro. She loves to, she loves to introduce fencing to the community. She loves to introduce fencing to kids. She likes, the, she likes that feedback when someone for the first time holds a weapon in their hand and goes, this is so cool. You know, she just enjoys that so much and she loves teaching the beginners class. She has such a big heart. So um, just to make sure to keep this short, I just want to make sure that um, you all know a little bit about her outside of fencing, her heart, her dedication, her compassion. Um, that is what Iris and Merman's about. And congratulations to uh, my best friend, business partner, confidant, teammate, and my little sister.
actually sits in Emma's room, and I make sure he's watching her when she sleeps. <laughs> um, I'm not just... through our fencing club is better because they did walk through our doors and try the sport. And really, and this is so honest, is that at the end of the day, I'm such a fan of this sport and I love it. <laughs> so I really just want to thank you and I hope I pass that on to you guys and I hope that you know that I just want to make sure that everyone enjoys the sport. So um, I am so incredibly thankful and overjoyed. So. And this last year, I had my kid, and this year is probably much of one of the best days I have to see besides having my kid last year, so thank you. First, to thank you all for being here. I said you all. I want to thank all of you. I live in the South. All of you for uh, being here tonight. I want to also mention who the inductees are going to be for next year. We have Alan Kern. Alan Kern bought a book on Broadway and 72nd Street for about a nickel and taught himself defense and trained LBX Rod. Captain Hippolyta Nicholas was the first coach at the Fencers Club. He'll be inducted next year. He was known more for his cooking than his fencing, but he was, did great things starting that club. And it started on 9th Street and 6th Avenue, right across from the Jefferson Market. Jamie Melcher is going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame next year. Dick Oles, the coach from Johns Hopkins University. Ed Vabel, first American to win the Martini and Rossi in Epe, and he was my next door neighbor. He started me in fencing. Ivan Lee. Vladimir Nazlimov. Aaron Smart. And Keith Smart. So congratulations to them. 
We'll see you next year in some city. And thank you very much for coming.